Hello everybody, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Zhang. I'm an internal medicine hospitalist and a paramedic researcher. Uh, in this video, uh, I'll try to provide an overview of the long COVID over the last couple years. And uh, I'm also going to provide some of the mechanisms uh, for how this happened. And uh, in the end, um, I will talk about what's the potential treatment. Uh, let's begin. First, we look at uh, one article published in uh, British Medical Journal. Uh, it's is a study between January 2020 and May 2021. Uh, this article reviewed about uh, 61,881 articles related to the topic of long COVID. And uh, I think this is very interesting and give us a very good review. Um, first, they provide definition. So definition of long COVID is a persistent of symptoms after four weeks of a COVID infection. And uh, we can also see that uh, there is a very high incidence uh, from prior research. Uh, based on different studies, uh, the incidence at six days past infection was about 32% up to 87%. And the symptom at 90 days was 96%. That's a very, very high number. And at six months, it still has 76% of people who has symptoms. So let's look at uh, the symptoms of long COVID. The number one uh, is the fatigue. So actually at a 12 months after infection, 60% of people still have symptoms of fatigue. And uh, we still don't know what happened to this. It does not seem to be associated with uh, the inflammation marker. So the proposed mechanism, including several of them, including uh, central nervous response to inflammation and uh, viral invasion of the muscle and uh, muscle nerve junction problems. And another consideration is the psychological uh, factors. Uh, number two symptom is dyspnea, uh, shortness of breath. So reported rate has been very different. And uh, one report showed 46% of people in six weeks after infection still have shortness of breath. I think actually people who have shortness of breath will be a lot more. Um, and in acute phase, apparently, you know, this is the main focus of the infection, the lung infection and pneumonia, viral pneumonia. And some people may have um, pulmonary fibrosis. And uh, the mechanism probably we'll talk about later. And a third problem is the cardiac. And uh, very commonly people have chest pain. And uh, some people has elevated heart marker like a troponin uh, indicating myocardial injury uh, versus the myocarditis. So a small study showed that uh, the instance of this is 21.7%. And uh, the proposed mechanism is uh, the immune response to viral infection. The next one is the central nervous system. And uh, in the acute phase, many of the changes are very common, especially in severe COVID diseases. And uh, long-term follow-up, uh, people can have uh, brain uh, clotting. And uh, one study looking at a headache and strokes after six weeks is about 10% in all COVID patients, not just severe cases. And uh, it's also, also report of people uh, develop mental health issues. So there is article I listed below uh, showed that PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, is about 16%. Um, also reported depression and anxiety are very common. Uh, next list is a uh, lost taste and smell. Uh, this is around 8%. We do not know this will recover eventually. Um, the mechanism of this is still unknown because the nerves of uh, uh, taste and smell do not have ACE2 as a receptor for virus to, in to enter. As a result, the mechanisms of this are, are still unclear. Next, we focus on organ dysfunction. And uh, we know that in the hospitalized patients, uh, a significant number of patients had renal failure and the liver function changes. That's actually very common. But uh, what about after left the hospital? Uh, a study showed that in six months, a 35 patient uh, who was previously hospitalized for COVID still has decreased renal function. And uh, some people can have a liver function changes 
persistent and uh, even worsening liver function if they have underlying liver disease. And most importantly, uh, I think this is probably most one of the more dramatic changes is that 50% of COVID infection who has a mild um, pancreatic injury. So this is a total population. So I believe this actually increases the risk of diabetes in the future. Um, recent CDC data suggests that in children at age 18 and under, uh, they had 166% of increase in diabetes after COVID. Uh, this is a very dramatic. Uh, what is the mechanism? I'm glad the science um, started picking up this and uh, they proposed that uh, because all the organs have ACE receptor, so virus can enter almost every organ tissues. So they uh, recognize that uh, a long COVID is related to the uh, invasion of tissue by uh, the virus. They also recognize the inflammation and the immune response. And uh, there is a clinical trial going on trying to suppress the cytokines and the inflammation. Uh, I haven't seen the results yet. Um, but in, uh, in my opinion, uh, please look at my previous channel, I still believe uh, this is a, a complex between the virus and antibody that cause a disease. So the virus is not alive and they are neutralized. Think about it. If the virus is still there and, uh, you know, they should serve as an active vaccine. So they keep, a, you know, stimulate the immune system, they should keep producing antibodies. But this is not happening. So after six months of the infection, uh, the antibody has dropped down significantly and you don't have any protection against reinfection. And uh, what's going on? Looks like uh, uh, the virus, although they're still in the, in the organ system, but they are not seen by the immune system. And uh, the body treated as a garbage. So it's already been neutralized and disposed of. But this garbage will cause a lot of problem for the body as the body try to clean, clear this up. I think this is what's happening. And uh, this is more likely look at uh, uh, the antibody binding to the antigen. So they have two segment. One is a fragment of antibody called FAB, which binds to the virus. Another segment is constant fragment. It's called FC. Uh, this cause immune response, but the response to it is a, a inner immunity, not specific to the virus. But this will cause uh, immune response and cause problems, and including inflammation. In the next video, I'll talk about uh, in specific in scientific term how this happens, and I'll try to do a little research for the next two weeks. Uh, try to. Um, update you about what's a possible treatment in that step and down uh, below uh, the, the, the pathways. So most likely the treatment will be a holistic uh, involving several multiple steps. Uh, there is one interesting article I want uh, uh, you to, to see is that, uh, I, I believe this is very interesting, is that uh, in Israel uh, they found out that uh, uh, giving vac vaccination uh, will prevent the occurrence of a long COVID uh, symptom if you get reinfected afterwards. So this study about 951 COVID patients and uh, a monitor for post COVID symptoms, uh, they are simply including fatigue, headache, muscle pain, and weakness. So, and uh, vaccinated people of more than 60% less to develop a long COVID symptoms. Actually, their occurrence is pretty similar to the uninfected people. So I think this is almost total pre uh, prevention of a long COVID um, symptoms after vaccine. I think this is important. And uh, I, I believe that even you, you already has the long COVID symptoms and you still have a risk to develop a COVID again, and you should be vaccinated to prevent the further development of symptoms from long COVID. Uh, that's the end of today. Um, as, as I said, uh, please uh, look at my next video. I'll talk about uh, the treatment based on this uh, understanding. Thanks for listening.